Good morning and welcome to the news at 10 right here on Super Screen Television, broadcasting to you live from our studios in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I'm blessed, I want to say, and now to the report we're tracking at this hour. The Kaduna State High Court has again adjourned its ruling on the application filed by the Mbatu, the leader of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, IMN, Ibrahim el -Zakzaki, for permission to travel abroad for medical treatment. The presiding judge, Justice Darius Kobo, adjourned the seating of the matter to July 29, 2019, to rule on the application. Meanwhile, counsel to El Zakzaki Femi Falano appealed to the court to allow his client to seek urgent medical treatment abroad due to the condition of his health. It will be recalled that El Zakzaki and his wife Zainat are facing trial over allegation of culpable homicide, unlawful assembly, and disruption of public peace, among other charges filed against them by the Cardinal State government. Away from that now to Edo State, the House of Representatives have given a one-week ultimatum to the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, to issue a fresh proclamation for the Edo State House of Assembly. The lawmakers arrived at the resolution during Wednesday plenary while adopting the result of an other committee mandated to investigate the crisis in the Edo State Legislature. Part of the rule, Mr. Chairman, is that once the proclamation is issued, Members elect are entitled to know they are get if, uh, either text messages or through email or to phone calls or whatever they should be aware. But these 30 members who had this press conference the fact that they were not aware of the date of the inauguration, and that became a serious problem. And therefore, they were not part of the inauguration. Again, two members. Who, are, who were part of the nine members that took the inauguration ceremony that 17. Their names are Barrister Eric Okaka and Mr. Uyi, who were part of the nine. Later, after they came out, they said, look, we are not, we were forced to be part of the inauguration. Because when we got the picture of the inauguration, some of the members were in short knickers. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, we had our own recommendation since the report is before us. And the recommendation of the committee is that one, that the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, in the interest of peaceful coexistence of the state, issue a fresh proclamation within one week in line with section 105 of section 3 of the constitution of the prior body of Nigeria. The House of Representatives had set up a 13-member other committee to investigate the crisis in the Edo State House of Assembly. The lower chamber also directed the Inspector General of Police, IGP, and the Director General, DG Department of State Services, to short down the Edo State House of Assembly and provide adequate security to allay further fears of intimidation and threat as alleged by members elect. They also agreed that where the above recommendations fail, the National Assembly shall invoke the provision of Section 11, Subsection 4 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which empowers it to take over the State House of Assembly until the situation normalizes. The publication in the National Daily informing the members of the public was done two days after the inauguration. And I don't know how you are going to say this. So for that matter, you are ruled out of order. <laughs> Thank you. Recommendation four. Recommendation five. In other news now, freedom of information remains a tool for promoting transparency and accountability in government and other sectors. This was the submission of a law professor from the University of Lagos, Ayuade Asemua, at the public hearing of freedom of information organized by Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, in Lagos. The law provides um, the framework for accessing information. The law offers us a significant paradigm shift from where we needed to appeal and beg for information to a framework that compels public institutions to collect, collate, and make readily accessible information to the general public. Then there are the areas where you will not be provided information, must not. However, even under the must not, 
there is a provision for appeal to the courts and that is because the law knows that the courts can sit in camera to consider whether even in those cases where largely it's about national defense security issues truly the decisions have been predicated on reasonable grounds freedom of information act will ensure that information records are provided to citizens to demand for accountability. With the Freedom of Information Act, if those in government at those level see that people can ask and demand for information, I believe the tanker worm of corruption will go down. The deputy chairman of Sarab, Olu Adamilari, said the rationale behind the FOI public hearing is to educate citizens on practical guidelines to access information from government offices in Nigeria. What Sarab stands for is transparency and accountability in the fight against corruption. So, for instance, we have resources allocated to the education sector. You don't know how much, you don't know how much is being spent. So how can you even demand for accountability? All of us in our different neighborhoods, we see the lapidated schools and we have all, we all have one issue or another we experience directly or vicariously about the falling standard of education. So how do you advocate a government? How do you ask questions if you don't have information? So what the FY Act will do is it's a, it gives you the legal backing to ask for information, to get it and then make requests of those in power. As telling Lagos, a famous legal practitioner, Barrister Monday Obani, is challenging the suspension of Ogun State gov local government chairman and 37 local council development area chairmen, councillors, and other political functionaries in the state. Addressing journalists in his office, Obani described the suspension as illegal and unconstitutional. The recent decision of the Supreme Court in regards to suspension or dissolution of uh, local government council is that. The governor cannot, the State House of Assembly cannot, even if there is existing law enacted by the State uh, House of Assembly to do that, that will be running contrary to the express provisions of the Constitution that guarantees democratically elected uh, local government uh, council uh, officials. And so that remains the position of the law. So even if there is any law that gives them that power, they cannot even do it. They cannot remove a properly validly elected local government official, that is the law. And so we have uh, tried to use uh, uh, peaceful means by writing them, believing that they would have uh, paid attention to the, to the letter, but they have refused. So we now need to alert the Ogun State indigents of what their government is doing. Maybe peradventure they will reach out to them so that we can have this matter resolved. They ask them to come back. Their tenure will expire in October. They have only a few months to, to and then they have not been paying them their salaries. They just locked them out. The LG and LCDA chairman insist they were duly elected and maintain that the 8th House of Assembly denied them right of fair hearing. As it stands, they are yet to challenge the Ogun State Governor, Dakwa Biodun, and the State House of Assembly in court. Politics is what is playing itself out. Um, we have not been suspended for any legal um, reasons and to even say we can be suspended it's illegal in its in its in its right sense so we we've we've relied on the mandate of the people that was given to us on october 16 2016 october 10 28 2016 we were sworn in on october 10 2016 the tenure runs out on october 10 2019 Everything we have done as elected council chairman, 57 of us, we have 57 um, vice chairmen, we have 57 SLGs, we have over 350 councillors that are affected by this um, illegal purported suspension. We did not do anything in office to serve the bidding of anyone. As such, when Prince da um, Dr. Um, Dakwa Building came into office, we believe that the same way is enjoying the mandate of the people. It's the same way we have the right to enjoy the mandate of the people till 10th of October. The unconstitutional and unlawful suspension of the chairman be reversed with immediate effect to enable them to complete their tenure, which is to expire on the 10th day of October 2019. Two, 
that all their entitlements for the past 33 months, which they have been denied, as stated above, above be computed and paid to them forthwith with effect from 10th day of October 2019, when they were duly sworn into office as LG LCDA chairman till the 10th day of October 2019, when they are expected to leave office. We also demanded the payment of 500 million naira as damages for the infringement on their fundamental right as guaranteed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended and the hardship they have suffered as a result of the willful deprivation of their entitlement as council executive. Having received no response from either the executive governor or, or the speaker, our next line of action will be to seek legal redress in a competent court of law. You will recall that the chairman will disengage on allegations of gross misconduct and misappropriation of public funds. Still in Lagos now talking health, the Joint Health Sector Union Johesu Igbobi Lagos chapter is demanding the salaries of its members withheld by the federal government owing to the nationwide strike embarked by the medical workers in 2018. National Chairman of Johesu Igbobi Lagos chapter, Comrade Godwin Ibokwe, made the demand in an interview with Super Screen Oluwa Tosin Fakayode in Lagos. Government can not in review the salary of the medical doctors without also considering a review of other members of the health sector within that same system. And I think it's wrong. And that has been the agitation. And that is the reason why Johesu, they make up 95% of the workforce in the health sector. And it will be wrong for that number of workers in the health sector to be marginalized. These are issues that have been decided in the court and uh, there has been court injunctions to this and um, at various points the government has come up with memorandums of agreement. They have come up with the fact that we will address these issues and at the end of the day nothing has been done and that is where we have found ourselves. To. On the way forward, the National Secretary of Johesu Bobi Chapter, Lakuli Fagbimi, wants the federal government not to privatize public health institutions in the country. The way forward in this regard is for federal government to make sure, to try as much as possible, to pay up this April May salary. Because even as we, as we are now, we heard that even the, the president did not know anything about this our withheld salary, that it was just done by the former Minister of Health. And I don't know why we are is written in the federal government um, constitution or in the Nigerian constitution. And um, secondly, when we are talking about privatization, privatization will not do, privatization of health, of health institution will not do Nigeria any good. We not even do the federal government any good. Because we are talking of human, uh, human beings here. We are talking of life here. Even with this uh, situation, we know how many people that cannot afford, that cannot afford um, medical care. So in order to afford medical care, that is why National Health Insurance Scheme was established. Still, it, it doesn't um, even take care of many, many um, Nigerians. All right, now the Nigerian Air Force NAF has redeployed Air Commodore Precious Amadi as the new commander of Air Task Force ATF Operation Lafayette Dole in Brown State. And if NAF Director of Public Relations and Information Air Commodore Mbikulu Daramola who disclosed these in a statement said the posting is part of the redeployment of senior officers in line with a routine exercise aimed at ensuring operational efficiency and effectiveness in the force. Amadi replaces Air Vice Marshal AVM James Wani, who has been moved to the Special Operations Command SOC Bauchi as Air Officer Commanding AOC. The Ramallah also said all appointments take effect from Friday, July 19th, 2019. You're still on to the news at 10 right here on Super Screen Television. We take our first break and when we return, there's more in business to stay with us.
Many thanks for staying tuned to the news at 10 right here on Super Screen Television. And now to the latest update in business. The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Uba Maska as Executive Director of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. The Senate also confirmed the appointment of three other members as non-executive commissioners of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. This followed the consideration of Senate Under Committee on the screening of presidential nominees report presented by Senator Folarin Teslim during Thursday plenary. After exhaustive deliberations and scrutiny of the curriculum vitae of, and other supporting documents of the four nominees and having been satisfied with their qualifications, experience, suitability, competence and ability, hereby recommends that this Senate do confirm them as commissioners on the governing board of Nigerian Communications, NCC, as follows. One, Engineer Ubali Maska, Executive Commissioner, reappointment. Aliu Saidu Abubakar, Non-Executive Commissioner, fresh appointment. Professor Milonia Abowe, Non-Executive Commissioner, fresh appointment. And lastly, Abdulaziz M. Salmon, Non-Executive Commissioner, fresh appointment. Prayer that this Senate do approve the recommendation of ad hoc. However, Senator representing Adamawa South, Yaori Banos, raised concern about the nomination of Aliyu Seidu Abubakar, who hailed from the northeast of the ground that the nominee lacked credible education certificate but was overruled by President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan. Confirmation. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Engineer Uba A.S. Maska as Executive Commissioner from the Northwest. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Aliyu Saidu Abubakar as non-Executive Commissioner from Northeast? Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Professor Milenia Abowe as non-executive commissioner. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Abdulaziz Mohammed Salman as non-executive commissioner? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination of Mr. Engineer Uba A.S. Maska as executive commissioner is hereby confirmed. The nomination of Aliyu Saidu Abubakar as non-executive commissioner is hereby confirmed. The nomination of Professor Milenia Abowe as non-executive commissioner of the Nigerian Communications Commission is hereby confirmed. And the nomination of Abdulaziz Mohammed Salman as non-executive commissioner of the Nigerian Communications Commission is hereby confirmed. Also confirmed is the appointment of Professor Abari Galadima as the Substantive Director General of Nigerian Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPSS. Still talking business data from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS shows that within a period of three months, covering January to March this year, the federal government spent the sum of 610.2 billion naira paying interest on its domestic debt. According to the data, Nigerian domestic debt stood at 13.11 trillion naira as the first quarter of this year, while the debt, domestic debt was incurred through the insurance of seven financial instruments. NBS also said that other instruments used by the federal government in raising its domestic debt are Nigerian Treasury bills with 2.65 trillion naira, Nigerian Treasury bonds with 150.98 trillion naira, and promissory notes with 366.85 billion naira. A breakdown of the 120.91 billion naira showed that the sum of 74.14 billion naira was spent in January, while February and March had 29.68 billion naira and 17.09 billion naira respectively. And that's it on business. We'll take another short break and when we return the news at 10 continue shortly with foreign sport news in a beat to join us again. <laughs> 